Enzoftec has developed a series of videos for the selection and design of stormwater facilities for land disturbance projects. In this video, I shall show you the design of filtering devices, both non-structural and structural, using SwimSoft VA. Virginia Department of Conservation and Recreation, or DCR specification number 12 gives a complete description of these facilities, their performance, and criteria for design, their feasibility and design applications, regional and special case design adaptations, their construction and maintenance. The pictures and tables shown here are from these specifications. Table 12-1 gives the summary of storm water functions provided by surface and underground filtering practices. You will notice that they have no runoff volume reduction capability. These filtering devices are ideal to treat runoff from small and highly impervious sites. Sand filters are best applied on small sites where the contributing drainage area, 40A, is as close to 100% impervious as possible. The major design goal for sand filters is to provide moderate pollutant removal performance. Essentially, this facilitates the water quality discharge passing through a filter media and returned back to the storm drainage system. The designer has the option to select the right BMP types for specific site conditions. They may be at ground or below ground. While the site requirements for each type may vary, the basic design concepts remain the same as provided in SwimSoft VA. Table 3123 of the 1999 Virginia Storm Water Management Handbook, Volume 1, gives the appropriate intermittent sand filter applications to various site areas. The maximum contributing drainage area for surface sand filters is 5 acres. This is limited to a maximum of 2 acres for perimeter or underground filters. A non-structural sand filter can be provided for sites with contributing drainage area less than 2 acres. The bottom is lined with impermeable filter fabric and has perforated under drains that return the treated water to the storm drainage system. The filter has two sections with a dry or wet sedimentation chamber preceding the sand filter bed. Surface sand filters, like the Austin surface sand filter systems, are designed with both the filter bed and sediment chamber located at ground level. The filter chambers are created using precast or cast-in-place concrete. They are normally designed to be offline facilities with flow splitters that can facilitate diversion of the desired water quality volume to the filter for treatment. Underground sand filters, like Washington DC underground vault sand filters and the Delaware sand filter systems also have the above features, with the exception that they have underground internal flow splitters and overflow devices that bypass runoff from larger storm water events around the filter. The drainage area served by one vault filter should be limited to 1.25 acres. Perimeter sand filters also have the basic design elements of a sediment chamber and filter beds. However, in this design, flow enters the system through slots or grates, as at the edge of a parking lot. They are usually designed as online practices, but can be modified to divert larger flood events to bypass treatment. In addition, there are a number of proprietary filters that use various filter media and geometric configurations to achieve filtration within a packaged structure. Designers must verify that the particular product has been reviewed and accepted by the Virginia BMP Clearinghouse for use in Virginia. Hybrid systems include sand filters on the bottom of a dry extended detention pond. Table 12.2 gives the filtering practice design guidance. There are two levels of design for sand filters, the baseline design, level 1, or an enhanced design, level 2. While a level 1 filter is limited to a single cell design, level 2 filters can have two cells. The bottom of the facility for non-structural sand filters should be at least 2 feet above the seasonally high groundwater table. I now open the project which we have set up in video 3. BMP5 of Outfall 2 is a sand filter. I shall use this example to demonstrate the design steps. I go to File, Design BMP Facility. This opens the filtering practice or sand filter worksheet. You will note that the required treatment volume and the percent impervious cover fields are already populated in the screen. The bottom of sand filter elevation is for bookkeeping only. Adequate pretreatment is needed to prevent premature filter clogging and extend the life of the filter media. These basins are usually sized using the Camp-Hazen equation. 
Sedimentation chambers may be wet or dry, but must be sized to accommodate at least 25% of the total treatment volume. After entering all the open fields in the pretreatment section, I click on the Design Pretreatment button. The program calculates the required pretreatment depth and area, and compares with the size provided. The remarks will show if the pretreatment design is satisfactory or not. The required design volume is automatically populated. You will notice that the default values are provided for some of the fields that follow. The height of water above the filter bed should not exceed 18 inches for surface filtering practices. The depth of the filter media plays a role in how quickly storm water moves through the filter bed and how well it removes pollutants. The minimum filter bed depth ranges from 12 to 18 inches. All storm water filters should be designed to drain or dewater within 40 hours after a storm event to reduce the potential for nuisance conditions. The required filter bed surface area is computed using the Darcy's Law, as derived by the City of Austin, Texas, Environmental and Conservation Services Department. The surface area is a function of the water quality volume, permeability of the filter medium, the bed depth, the hydraulic head, or the height of water, above the bed, and the time for water, to filter through the bed. The filter bed surface area will be approximately 3% of the contributing drainage area, depending on the imperviousness of the CDA. In order to capture the volume from high-intensity storms prior to filtration, and avoid premature bypass, at least 75% of the design treatment volume has to be temporarily stored in the filtering system. This includes the volume over the top of the filter media, the volume in the pretreatment chamber or chambers, and any additional storage. After entering all the open fields in the treatment section, I click on the Design Sand Filter button. The program calculates the required filter bed area and compares with the area provided. The adequacy of the temporary storage is determined. The remarks will show if the design is satisfactory or not. I go to the top menu bar and click on File, Solve. This will save all the data including the results. I now go to the top menu bar and click on File, Print. The print report, which is in Excel format, gives the results of analysis. Sand filters are generally located as offline facilities. Low flow diversions or flow splitters in the form of a weir or curb opening, sized for the treatment volume help minimize clogging and reduce the maintenance frequency. The program lets us design flow splitters. For this, I go to File, Splitter Design. This opens the flow splitter bypass worksheet. You will notice that the water quality discharge and 10-year peak discharge are already populated in the form. I enter the bottom width of the concrete flume or the curb cut at the top and the length of bypass weir to convey the 10-year flow. When I click on Compute, the program calculates the hydraulic head required to divert the water quality discharge to the facility and the hydraulic head required to divert the 10-year flow away from the facility. I enter the heights provided and go to the top menu bar and click on File, Solve. This will save all the data including results of analysis. I go to the top menu bar and click on File, Print. The print report, which is in Excel format, gives the results of analysis. This completes the design of storm water filtering systems.